in New York we had gangs. Was it ever intertwined with Islam? Like when you was growing up, do you see gang bangers being Muslim? When your father's been an Imam for over 40 years. Smashing the Ikhwa, you familiar, Imam Ibrahim. I mean, growing up as a Muslim, what was it like in NYC? In Brooklyn, New York, and around the city, we didn't see Muslims like that. Our family kept the children close to the masjid. A lot of our parents became Muslim in the 60s and the 70s. There wasn't that much knowledge exactly. about Islam in America. Islam is all about knowledge. If you don't know nothing, you can't do nothing. When we actually live live our lives and we go through the different things that we go through, that knowledge is what separates everything. I, you know it affects how you deal with situations. So if you slip and fall, to reflect and think, what did I do wrong? Well, how did I get here? And you go back, Islam is the, the only way to set you straight. Only way. This is a fun fact that Al Amin's father was so headstrong on making sure that his kid grew up upon righteousness. What did he do with you and a couple of your brothers at a certain age? When I was 12, my father sent my two brothers and I to Morocco. Oh, he stayed with us for about a month. He said, I'm out. We left us in a hotel. Somebody gonna pick you up. See you when I see you. Some people would say, yo, this is extreme, but mashallah, look. I'm still alive. I'm still alive. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa ta'ala wa barakatuh to all the hadith disciples, YouTubers, and viewers. Welcome back to a new video on Rip Right HD. Yeah, over, huh? Yo, the break's over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, right, so we got my boy Alamine here. Um, born and raised a Muslim in NYC. Um, big Muslim family, well known. Um, how long your father's been an Imam? For over 40 years. Over 40 yeah, years. Masjid al Ikhwa, you familiar? Imam Ibrahim um, is well known. So we want to ask um, Alamine, growing up as a Muslim, what was it, what was it like in NYC? So, you know, Contrary to what the Sheikh just mentioned about, you know, how life was in Philadelphia where, or is in Philadelphia where you, you could go outside, you see Muslims everywhere. In Brooklyn, New York, you know, and around the city, we didn't see Muslims like that. So, growing up as a Muslim, you know, our families, we, kept, they kept the children close to the masjid. And we were like, and I, like a little group. A bubble, so like we were, a bubble. Yeah, it was like, we, it was like we had a tribe of our own. So in that way, I think it kind of helped us because we had a stronger connection to each other as Muslims, knowing that we all had this like safe space that we could go to. You know what I'm saying? And when we went to the masjid, we all knew each other's fathers. We all knew each other's mothers. Our mothers and fathers were friends with each other. We did everything together. And a lot of our parents became Muslim in the 60s and the 70s. And, and a lot of them were people that were conscious. They accepted Islam in their 20s. Think about it. There wasn't that much knowledge exactly. about Islam in America. But some of them, like, you know, my father, for example, he had a revolutionary mind. He was part of NAACP when he was a teenager. He on a, you know, march on Washington. So he had this mindset of, like, fighting against the machine. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. growing up, raising his children, you know, we had got that mindset instilled in us as well. And we knew that we were different. And we had knowledge. So even though we saw outside and we lived in the neighborhoods where people who lived the lives that they lived, we knew that there was something different about us mm. and our parents they reinforced that in us told us that we were different they would teach us things and perhaps we didn't necessarily understand public or schools. fully or fully believe it until we got to some of us went to public schools we made mistakes you know we had our trials and tribulations because we're only human beings and peer pressure is real you know but you know when we if Allah blessed us to actually sit back and reflect we actually sit back and see and you think about the things your parents told you my mother my father taught me it's like wow it happened this is real yeah. like everything that these people are saying is like false and fake and the truth is back where i came from I, uh, so if i do slip if i do make a mistake i always had a something to, revert something to, back go, to. to go back to so you know it's, it was i would say a lot of the people that grew up the way i did you know who were you know we would say second generation muslims in america you know, we felt that connection. You know what I'm saying? Where we had like a family, you know what I'm saying? Outside of the family. And alhamdulillah, you know, Islam is all about knowledge. You know what I'm saying? If you don't know nothing, you can't do nothing. And when we actually live our lives and we go through the different things that we go through, that knowledge is what separates everything. You know what I'm saying? When, no you, when you know, you know, it affects how you deal with situations. You know what I'm saying? So if you slip and fall, you can reflect and think, well, what did I do wrong? Well, how did I get here? And you go back and Islam is the, 
The only way. I, yo, That's the gonna only, set you the only way out. Without now, a doubt. this is a fun fact, right? Um, Al Amin's father was so headstrong on making sure that his kids, his family, grew up upon righteousness. That what did he do with you and a couple of your brothers at a certain age? Yeah, well, when I was, I remember when I was about seven years old, he sent my older brother, who's about eight years older than me, to Sudan. You know, and um, he by himself. Time, by himself, he spent some time there. But <coughs> the beautiful thing was, there were other brothers who sent their sons also. So, like I said, we have like a tribe, and it was. I, it, I'm not sure what the number was, if it was ten or twelve, but there were other children that grew up in our communities that all went to Sudan, and they stayed there and studied Quran and Islamic studies, and they came back. When I was twelve, my father sent my two brothers and I. We went to Morocco. How, you know? how long was he there? Well, who? Your pop before he... Oh, he stayed with us for about a month. And then what? I was 13 at the time. My two brothers were 14. <laughs> he said, I'm out. Yeah. He left us in a hotel. Is said, that somebody going to pick you up? So he said, somebody going to pick you up? Yeah. And, you know, I see you when, if, I, see you when I see you. Yeah. Is that... Some people <laughs> would say, yo, this is extreme, but... MashaAllah, look. Yeah, I'm still alive. I'm still alive. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm left still your, your three sons. Wow. Could you imagine your three sons in a whole nother country and saying, yo, I'm going to be with y'all for a month, show y'all the ropes, I'm out. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And, and what, what do you think about that experience? Did that, did, did that change your life? It, it, it shaped me, definitely. You know, it, wow. it helped me realize, you know, because I already had a, 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 a strong Islamic foundation, you know, since I was a kid. I was three, four years old. I used to have dreams about about Jannah and, and Nam. Oh, wow. I used to have right, dreams right. about the fire and the paradise, paradise and good deeds and how important it was to be a good person. I'm talking about from like four years old. I had this consciousness. But when we went to Morocco, it taught me, because, you know, being an American, you know, we're always told that, you know, or fooled into thinking that we're special. But that America is the greatest place, we're the greatest people, we do everything the best. When I went to Morocco, I learned that I'm just like a speck. Mm. Just a speck on this earth. And it opened up my heart, opened up my mind, just to not think of myself as being something great. And, and I remember you explained something to me about color. Like, you had a different outlook on, like, color. You thought Definitely. Hey, these, fem these females might have been looked better because of this color or that color because of your... Yeah, it was strange. It was strange because, you know, the way you process things in your mind, I don't know, it's weird. It's not, I'm not a professional, so I can't really explain break it, it down in a professional way, but... People that you would think look strange to you, over time they they normalize, and then you start to see the beauty in people just from physical appearance. But it also had an effect on me when I came back to America, where it took a while. It took me a while to kind of get accustomed to the appearance of the people that look just like me, mm. you know. And it was hard for me to find beauty in my own people for a while. It took maybe about six months. For me to actually see beauty in my own, it was, it was deep. It was deep. And I'm 13, 14 years old. 13, going through 14. that, not really understanding. And how long did you gonna, stay over there? I stayed over there for 13 months. Alhamdulillah. So 13 months. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And then after that progression and, and, and just living life, so now at that at those teenage years, what was was it was it more difficult when you was younger as a Muslim in NYC or you would say the teenage years? Because I know, you know, after a while, like for me, I tell people, for me, it's easy to be Muslim because you know it's the truth. You've been through the gutter. You know, maybe maybe if I would have accepted Islam a while ago, it might have been more difficult because it's still stuff I haven't done. Yeah, definitely. So what would you say, your, your beginning, them teenage years, was it difficult or, or so to speak, now? Well, I was always proud to be Muslim, you know. Um, so I never had an issue with my identity. Muslim identity. But, you know, but the... the being a Muslim has responsibilities yeah. and you know when you have peers once you go to high school and you get mixed in with people it's like a shock to you because I came from private school Muslim school you know where they wasn't into mingling and this and that people weren't saying certain things people were held accountable for what they do and say in high school you just run loose wow. you see boy and a girl holding hands kissing in the hallway you like shock you hearing them talking about certain things and you like Oh my gosh, yeah, what, Allah, what is this? You know, but then it's exciting because it's Romance, like, like, yeah, yeah, said. without a doubt. So now you're like, oh, this is what's going on. This is what my pops is trying to hide me from. 
Yeah. You know, and you want to kind of like indulge, indulge, and and, and and you know, so you have your Muslim identity, but then you, you know, you I'm surrounded man. around, you're you're surrounded I'm around, you surrounded around, you I'm a woman, I'm, you, I'm a you, you're surrounded by a whole bunch of people that think and believe nothing like you, mm -hmm. and you do want to fit in. You know what I'm saying? So you have a struggle. You have a struggle with doing the right thing, knowing what's right and doing what's wrong. You know, so it it was definitely you know. Yeah, it was definitely, definitely a test. Yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's a TV test. It's a test today. You know, we still live in these streets. You know, yeah. we gotta walk. We gotta go to work every day. You know, you gotta keep the your Muslim. And then your, yeah, and then your Muslim identity and your the responsibility of being a Muslim. You know, you have a name Al Amin. It means trustworthy, the truthful. So now you gotta try to live that. Now, quick question. Yeah. Because we've been dealing with Cali, different places where gang culture is major. Now we know in New York. We had gangs, D-Sebs, yeah, 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 Now, how was, was it ever intertwined with Islam? Like you see, you would just see a Muslim blood, a Crip blood. Like when you was growing up, do you see gang bangers being Muslim? No, not in the night. I grew up in the 90s, you know, 90s, early 2000s. You didn't, you didn't see that. You know, we had, you know, as Muslims, especially in New York, there's a lot of pride with being Muslim. So we couldn't see a connection. We couldn't see... You grow up as a Muslim, and then you separate, and you become affiliated with a gang of people who are not Muslim. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then you have allegiance to this group or this gang when we know that our allegiance is supposed to be to Allah. Right, you know, it. our allegiance is to Islam. So there, if a person who was Muslim was affiliated with a gang, it was more something that was hidden. They wouldn't... It wasn't outward. No, it wasn't outward because for us, it never made sense. And, and that you could ever be a Muslim and a gang member at the same time. Without you know, a doubt. but we know that it is real. It's, it's a real it's, thing. It's a real thing. But it's you know, like I said, we were like a tribe. So the tribe is not going to allow these young kids to come and just spoil the whole bunch like that and and introduce that type of stuff. So it was never really tolerated. And what about Muslim or Muslim combat? No, no, no. I mean, as children, you know, you wrestle in the masjid, you fight in little little fights here and there, but. You never hear about a Muslim killing another Muslim, shooting another Muslim, stabbing them. Never, you never, ever, ever. That was something that was unheard of. It never happened growing up to, with us. No, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Never had that struggle. So you know where we at, guys? The Masjid on the Van Wyck, Imam Muhammad Ibn Munir, Sheikh Mufti. We're out here with El Amin and a couple of the brothers, man. Just wanna um, shout out Hadith Disciple, man, and the founder and the brothers out here. Jazakumullahu khairan. Stay tuned, stay ripped, six pack, big back, big facts. I'm in. <laughs>